In the last video, we looked at how Elizabeth controlled Parliament. This video is going to focus on the opposition that stood against Elizabeth in Parliament and what she did to control the people who stood against her. Opposition. Despite her best efforts to control Parliament, Elizabeth found it increasingly difficult to stop MPs discussing sensitive issues. MPs are members of Parliament and these sensitive issues that she wanted them not to talk about were things like succession. So although patronage often brought dependable gentry to Parliament, so gentry that she trusted, sometimes people like William Cecil, shown here, used their influence over other MPs to stir up debates that would make the Queen take their views on issues such as succession more seriously. It tended to be lords and nobles who had grievances, which means they were angry at the Queen against something, against the Queen that would speak up more often in debates. So she had people who ignored the fact that she did not want them to discuss these issues. One of the biggest oppositions which you need to know for your exam is the Puritan opposition. These were known as the worst and noisiest opposition to Queen Elizabeth. So you might be thinking, well, what on earth is a Puritan? That's a good question. What is a Puritan? It is a person with strict moral discipline and obedience to God. These were convinced Protestants who were delighted that England had broken away from the, from the Roman Catholic um, religion, but they wanted more, okay? So a, you need to know a Puritan is somebody, a, a Christian who has strict moral discipline and obedience to God and that they were Protestants and they were against the Catholics. So the Puritans spoke up in Parliament regularly because they wanted these three things that you need to know. So they wanted Elizabeth to marry a Protestant prince and to make arrangements for her successor to be a Protestant too because they didn't want Catholic to be on the throne. They also wanted MPs in the Houses of Parliament to have freedom of speech and be able to say whatever they wanted without punishment because, as we find out later, Elizabeth punishes any Puritan opposition who speaks out in Parliament. So they wanted this element of free speech. They also wanted Elizabeth to change the way the church was organised, getting rid of bishops and allowing local church groups to choose their own leaders. Okay, They wanted to get rid of bishops from the church to allow this more of this freedom of speech and choice. So let's look at this Puritan who did stand up in Parliament. So when Parliament was not sitting, um, Puritans found other ways of expressing their views because obviously we know Parliament didn't sit very often, didn't come together very often. So how do these Puritans share these views that they want Elizabeth to marry, that they want to get rid of bishops and they want freedom of speech? Okay. In 1579, Puritan John Stubbs wrote a pamphlet criticising Elizabeth for considering a marriage to French Catholic, the Duke. These pamphlets were destroyed and Stubbs was arrested. As you can see, this is Elizabeth's reaction to opposition. Elizabeth ordered him to have his right hand cut off by a butcher's knife, as you can see in this image. After this brutal pu punishment, he was then imprisoned. So she's acting quickly against the Puritan opposition. She's not happy about it. She doesn't want them to have this freedom of speech. And she doesn't want to build a, an uprising. So there was opposition over religion. We're going to just briefly summarise Elizabeth's reaction. Puritan MPs demanded the Church of England get rid of bishops and they tried to start a debate in Parliament. What did she do? Elizabeth banned the debate and imprisoned three Puritans who tried to discuss this outside of Parliament. Let's look at another opposition. Puritan Peter Wentworth urged Elizabeth to name a Protestant as her successor. That's one of our key words. That means somebody who's going to take, after, take over when she dies. Elizabeth was furious at this intrusion and imprisoned him in the Tower of London, and he died four years later. So she acts swiftly um, to any opposition that, that is brought up by the church. Okay, let's look at opposition in terms of money then, that's not linked to Puritans. So we've got monopolies. So in 1589, and I would write these down, this is important, MPs complained about the purveyances, the Queen's right to buy supplies at cheap prices. Elizabeth said this did not concern MPs, but that she would look into their complaints. So they were complain complaining that the Queen 
had the right to buy supplies at cheap prices. They didn't want her to do that. Okay, and she her response was that she would look into their complaints. <laughs> so that was 1589. We, we move on a, a, about 10 years, 1597. A monopoly was the exclusive right to make or sell a product. Elizabeth had the right to grant or sell a monopoly to a favourite courtier. For example, she granted Walter a monopoly of tin. MPs complained, complained, complained about monopolies in 1597 in Parliament. So basically, she could choose somebody in her court and say, look, you have the right to sell tin, only you can sell tin, which means that they could raise the price. Okay, this would mean that the courtier had her, um, they were favoured by, by the Queen, and obviously the courtier liked that. The Queen agreed to look into the issue, but did not take action. So people were cross because this one person, obviously Walter's making all this money from selling tin. Monopoly is something you, you need to know for the exam, so you need to make sure you remember this bit. Okay, so what happens next? In 1601, shortly before she dies, two years before she dies, Elizabeth had done little about monopolies and the MPs complained again much more forcefully. There was more opposition from MPs on the issue than any other issue at this time in Elizabeth's reign. Elizabeth realised she needed to compromise, so made a golden speech to Parliament, flattering MPs and reinforcing how much she loved her people. She cancelled some monopolies and promised to look into others. So she's starting to listen to the MPs that are rising against this monopoly system, how some members of Parliament were given exclusive rights to make or sell a product and others weren't. They were frustrated by that. So that's how she dealt with opposition, opposition to monopolies, opposition to religion. It was swift. You could probably argue not so quickly. She didn't respond very quickly to monopolies in the early stages. It took her a long time um, to change any of, the, any of the monopolies through this golden speech in 1601. Okay, there's a knowledge check on this slide. If you want to pause it and answer those questions, have a go. What have you learned from this lesson? And exam practice. This is a 20 mark question all about Parliament. Parliament was unimportant in Elizabeth's reign. MPs simply did whatever the Queen and her ministers wanted. How far do you agree? Have a go, email me your response and I'll mark it for you.